Our armed forces killed a large number of terrorists in Idlib, Arraqa, and Deir Zor. Four Palestinians were wounded by Israeli settlers in the West Bank. Hundreds in Tunisia took to streets to protest the government's policy, announcing a week of anger against it. Welcome to our news for today. Our army units have inflicted heavy losses on armed terrorist groups in Idlib suburbs, eliminating a large number of gunmen and destroying their weapons and hideouts. The army killed and wounded several terrorists and destroyed a vehicle near Wadi Dhif in Ma'rit al-Noman. Among the terrorists killed, Abdus Salam Rahmoun and Mustafa Dahman were identified. An army unit also destroyed an armored vehicle and a warehouse of weapons and ammunition and killed the terrorists inside in Kafarmid village in the governorate's suburbs. In Sarmin, another army unit eliminated a number of terrorist leaders after destroying their headquarters in Mhambal village and destroyed their armored vehicle. In Deir Zor, an armed terrorist group has attacked Al Qahar 109 oil well, 85 kilometers east of Deir Zor, and burnt the well after stealing some crude oil. A source at the Minister of Oil said the terrorist groups opened fire at the fire squads and maintenance workshops to prevent them from extinguishing the fire that had broken out, thus threatening with an environmental catastrophe that would jeopardize citizens' lives. In Arraqa, the authorities today intercepted a terrorist group that had attacked Al Ba'ath Dam, killing and wounding the members of the group. An official source told Sana that among the terrorists killed was the leader of the group. In Haman, army unit also repelled a terrorist group who tried to attack a Mharde power station, killing and injuring several terrorists. Among the terrorists killed are the group's leader, Munzer Fayez Turki Hassan, and Musab Abdullah Jauhar. Prime Minister Dr. Wael al halaqi has underlined the importance of cooperation between the government on the one hand and the national parties, popular organizations and vocational unions on the other to confront the ferocious assault Syria is exposed to that aims at ending its role of resistance and imposing foreign dictates. During his reception today of Dr. Ammar Bekdash, the Secretary General of the Syrian Communist Party and a number of the party's political bureau members Dr. Halaqi referred to the importance of maintaining communication between the National Progressive Front parties and all national parties with all the components of the Syrian people to get out of the present crisis as soon as possible. He also asserted the need of enhancing the culture of dialogue and national reconciliation to protect Syria's unity, security and stability. Minister of Social Affairs and Labor, head of the Supreme Relief Committee, Dr. Jasim Zakaria, has affirmed the ministry's constant work in cooperation with concerned bodies to offer services and assistance to displaced families. During the weekly meeting of the committee, Dr. Zakaria said, the urgent assistance presented has been able to meet many of the needs of affected families, adding that the ministry quickly interfered to provide new centers to harbor citizens. occupied Palestine, three Palestinians were injured, including a child, in a new aggression by Israeli settlers on Jalud farms southeast of Nablus. Palestinian sources announced that the settlers attacked the village at night and attacked inhabitants and their properties, setting fire into their crops. Israeli occupation authorities also broke into Palestinian houses and arrested a number of citizens. 
In Egypt, the National Salvation Front announced that it will do whatever it can to prevent the Muslim Brotherhood from ruling Egypt, pointing out that the Salafis had prepared an election law according to their political interests. The Front stressed that it will take part in the elections despite the fact that there were no guarantees on transparency. The Front pointed out that it will boycott the dialogue because it lacks credibility, criticizing the mechanisms used to conduct it. In Tunisia, hundreds of people have taken to the streets in Al Qasrain, west of the country, to protest against rising poverty and unemployment rates. The protesters called it the week of anger against the government. They've set fire to tires, cut off the main road, and chanted slogans against the ruling party. They also called on people to join them against the cruel policies of the Nahda movement. Tunisian army units were deployed to prevent possible clashes. Fourteen people were killed today in two U.S. drone raids south of Waziristan, north of Pakistan. Pakistani sources declared that the two raids have been launched by a U.S. Reconna reconnaissance drone, the first targeting Angwa Ada district south of Waziristan, killing eight people, including a Taliban commander and his deputy, and the second targeting north of Waziristan, killing four other people. With this, we come to the end of our news bulletin for today. Thank you for watching. For more information about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. And now to latest business and market news with Khalid Saqabani after a short break.